So we're going to do a very simple monoprinting process today. You need a few materials. Um, there's newsprint paper, which is the same paper that they use to print newspapers on. You might even find that you can actually print on top of a newspaper image like this one. Otherwise, you can just use the normal paper that you print on your computer with. I have a bunch of images here that might be interesting for me with figures. And this one, I printed it on a th thicker card. I put a thin card in the, in the printer and then I cut around the figure and I'll show you how I'm going to use that later, but it makes it much sturdier. So I've got a rag, some kitchen paper, some water, block printing ink, which is what they use for liner cuts as well. I do have a Bayer roller, but it's not imperative. A little piece of bubble wrap, or you might have other textured materials that you'd like to play with, like a paper doily or a leaf. Um, there's a sponge here. Um, a soft pencil and earbuds. Earbuds are very useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put some of this um, ink into a bowl so that I can use it to paint with. And I'm going to show you different techniques that you can use. Basically, you're going to be quite playful there's no right or wrong way, it's just hit and miss kind of way. You're going to be learning from each print about how much ink to use. So this ink is water soluble, so it is very easy to clean up afterwards. Um, so I could use a plate, or if you don't have a plate, like a mirror or a piece of glass, you could use the glass pane of a window or your bathroom mirror. Um, and then the first thing I would do here is to, to use this as a canvas to paint something on and then pull a print. So let me do that. So this is very 
useful because you can put your finger in a rag and dampen it with some water and actually take away the bits that aren't working for you and really just reconfigure things in a new way. And you just float the paper down. And just rub it down gently and peep. So once that dries, and it will dry quite quickly, you can use chalk pastels to come in and add colour to it. You can also cut the bits that you want to use out and lift them and put them onto a new background. So if you put some ink into a little bowl and you have some um, painting implements, you can use the glass of your window as a plate. Um, sometimes this is quite sticky and you might need to put a little bit of water on your brush to help it glide along. But you can then uh, literally paint on the glass and notice the beautiful brush marks that the brush leaves, the neck, the shoulders. And you don't really have a lot of control, which is quite liberating. You have to start to love what just falls onto the glass. Um, and then you can always bring a rag and make changes to what, what you put down here. Um, this is a bit of a broken kind of wing. Let's make that one going up. 
So a lot of it is about improvising, not having a clear plan so that you can still be playful. Now what are we going to do with these arms? Just bring them down. Might need a little bit of water to help it slide a bit more. So whatever I don't want, I can take a damp cloth and a finger and just wipe away what is excess to needs. Um, so you can spend quite a lot of time really treating it like a canvas. Um, and then come back and add more detail. I think the, the imperfection of it is quite nice actually. And then you can add other textures in the background. So this sponge has quite a nice texture, which can add some interest, different kinds of marks into the background. So you could really have quite a lot of fun with this and even add more darkness around but in a painterly way. Um, and even bring an earbud. a different kind of mark. So let me just see what that's going to do. Maybe a bigger piece of paper would be better. Keeping is very useful with printmaking. I think I've put on a little bit too much ink. It is far too thick, so your first print will be black, which in order to avoid that disappointment, you can take a piece of newspaper and have some newspaper handy so that you can pull the first one on paper that doesn't matter and just that will absorb the bulk of the ink. So that would have been the disappointing first print. Um, so it might still be a little bit thick. It's getting better now. 
Um, so let me even that out again. So one way to do this would be to take an earbud and work directly on the plate and um, you might have to turn the earbud around to get a clean side. Maybe I'll put the arms up. It's like a gesture of surrender. And then we can add some And you might want to add um, some feeling of light coming out. You can be quite expressive about it. If you feel you've um, you can also add imprints of things. And even indicate maybe a, some kind of ground here or whatever. I want to clean that up a bit. So here you can see there's a dark streak and there's another dark streak and that was from the roller so um, that you, you can learn by looking at the print what to avoid for next time. I could try and do another print on the same plate and then it would mean working into it again to strengthen maybe some parts this one will be a lot paler and it might not even work um, That is. Let 
me see what this one will do. Now this is not newsprint, it's just normal computer paper. And because it's paler, I'm rubbing it a little bit harder. Let me clap a bit more. And then you get this very pale print, which is quite useful because you can then come in afterwards with other materials and draw into it, and the colours will show up very nicely on the pale background. So sometimes we might have a, an image that we really like. So we might want to transfer it into the print. I'm just going to float that very lightly. So here's a, an image that um, I photocopied from a book. This is a figure bending backwards, which um, sort of captures something about maybe the way I'm feeling at the moment. <laughs> so instead of drawing it freehand, sometimes it's easier to cheat. So cheating is totally acceptable. Um, so you can use a pencil now and a soft pencil and just literally trace the figure using quite loose marks. without really being too fast about precision and that will give the drawing quite a, a loose spontaneous look which makes it look like it's your drawing rather than one that you've slavishly copied from somewhere. You can even find the, the movement in the figure and use some gestural marks to, to draw those in, to find the structure of it, the arm. Just the hair. And then maybe now I'm inspired to add to it and um, wings attached at the shoulder blades and this wing is closer to me so maybe it should be a bit bigger and then you can maybe add some kind of other things in the background um, there might be things falling from the sky, different sizes of things. You can really just be quite playful. Even this arm coming in might be something, though the, the edge of the plate is there. Um, you can even put symbols in. And so now we can see what happens. Um, now I didn't rub it because I don't want it to be dark all over. Otherwise, if you do that, then you won't see the, the lines. It's already quite dark. So maybe next time I'm not going to ink the plate quite as much just going to use the ink that's on the roller
and throw again. You can, of course, draw something by just looking at it, um, and then it really has its, it has your own feel to it. I'm sort of finding the figure quite loosely at first. There's a tilt there, and then the leg extends that way. I'm being quite loose in the beginning to just find my way with it. Now when I get a sense of a feeling for the, the figure, I can start making my marks a little bit more definite. Um, I can make the wings just r literally falling backwards. And this one could be detached, completely detached, fallen off. So let's see what that does. It is very much a hit and miss process, this. So you never know. So I didn't rub the page at all and the plate wasn't, didn't have a lot of ink on it, which allowed all the, the drawing marks to show. And one last try would be to use the same plate twice, because it's quite smudgy now, and it will be very pale. And let's see what that gives. Maybe nothing at all. So now I am rubbing quite hard to really get every last trace of ink onto the page. Oh. It's a little bit too pale. What you can do with a pearl print is to either work into it or use it again and print a second time. The other trick that I wanted to show you is 
the one where I carefully cut out a figure out of a thicker piece of thin card. Um, and this is not really needing any kind of plate. It's really just a little trick that you can do. You just put it under your paper and use the end, the dirty part of your roller after you've finished um, and just do that. You might even want to, you will get the roller mark but it's quite a beautiful ghostly kind of image and you can even repeat it a little bit so that you really get the sense of running um, and just do part of it. So if I wanted to now, I could use this as my next paper and put it flat on the, the inked up um, plate and do another drawing on top of that. And then you would get this layered um, effect 